All right. You guys might recognize that from a um, similar story in our faith tradition. That man was a Hindu. But we have a similar story from the Bible. But before we get there, what was everybody's takeaway from that video that you just saw? It was kind of hard to hear. But what... What will you take away from that video? And if I don't get some volunteers, I'm going to start picking people. So does anyone want to just shout out what spoke to them from that video? Love? Okay. Caring? George? Giving? Barb? Okay, good. Those are all there. And that's also from the story that I want to share with you today. And then we're going to talk about a little different track, too. That story, does that remind anyone of anyone, a very prominent message in, our, in the Christian faith? Does he remind you of anyone? The Good Samaritan. Okay, that's who we're going to talk about today. Rosemary, you get a gold star. See me afterwards. Um, the parable of the Good Samaritan, if you want to get out your Bibles or your iPads, is found in Luke chapter 10, and it starts at 25. Luke is after Mark, and if you're in the book of John, you went a little bit too far. It will kind of be in the back one-third of the Bible or so. Starts at Luke 10, chapter 25. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus, being the wonderful counselor that he is, asks him to answer his own question. What is written in the law, he replied, and how do you read it? And the expert answered, love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, and all your soul, and all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. He said, you have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But the guy wasn't satisfied. He wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is your neighbor? And I just kind of picture Jesus in this scenario going, oh, come on, really, dude? We really want to do this? Jim Romnick was an expert in aviation electronics and comm gear in the Navy. And this would be like somebody that had just gotten out of that basic school going up to Jim and challenging him. You know, not a smart move. Sure, I just got done with my school. He has in years and years of experience. But Jesus plays along. Okay, Jesus replied. He's telling a parable here, a story. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came to where the man was. When he saw him, he took pity on him, went to him and bandaged his wounds, poured oil and wine on, on them. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said. And when I return, 
I will reimburse you for any extra expense that you may have. Then Jesus turns back to the expert. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And going back to the beginning of the story, we're to love our neighbor. So which one, essentially, Jesus is asking, showed him love? The expert replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Okay, so much like our man from the video, we have another man that has compassion and is caring for somebody else. But much like the man in the video, the man crossed cultural boundaries when he did that. Thought that the man in the video was a Brahmin. I have no idea what that means. All I know is there were certain, if you, let's, if you caught it, there were objections to what he was doing because he was of a sect that was not supposed to touch those street people or have anything to do with them. Samaritans were a lot like that. They were a cast of people that were generally looked down upon and thought of as a lesser people. But the Samaritan was the one that showed love. Not the priest and not the Levite. The Levites, according to their customs, were not to touch dead bodies. So it was more important to the Levite to follow his customs and traditions than to follow the words of Jesus and show compassion. Now, I'm not that familiar with the priest or his background, what his damage was, but it was more important to him to appear proper and to help a man that needed him. Something else about the Samaritan. Verse 33, but a Samaritan as he traveled came to where the man was. Didn't stand there and say, come here and I will help you. The Samaritan went to him. I was talking to a pastor of a friend of mine about this, asking him for suggestions. And I was actually going to tie in something else with this. And he said, whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. Just stick to one thing. Don't make it too complicated. And one thing he pointed out It talks about the Samaritan man having pity on the man that was beaten and robbed. He told me that when he was in seminary, the word, the actual Greek word for what he did is the same Greek word that Judas used, or was used to describe what Judas did in ripping out his, his guts and spilling his blood on the fields If you uh, want to look that up, that's in Matthew 27, 8, and Acts 1, 8. That field to this day is called the field of blood. So essentially what the Samaritan is doing, pouring himself out and ripping himself open with compassion for this man. And I think that's a very valuable lesson. He was more important to him to honor and love on this man than to follow strict, socially accepted boundaries. Rosemary was involved with me with a feeding ministry down in Oshkosh. And we didn't have it, all we did, we were just a group of people, everybody got a little something, and we prepared and passed out, what, about 100 meals? The people living in low-income housing, living under trees or park benches. And eventually, the people that we served came to serve. They came to help prepare the meals and in turn, pass them out as well. And we didn't have a church. Different churches allowed us to use their kitchens when we were preparing the spaghetti or the chicken or whatever was on special at Woodman's that week that we could get cheap. 
And that was fine. I'm a very pretty man. Rosemary is very pretty. We were Christians doing a good thing. But when the people that we served started coming to that church, we were no longer welcome there. The kitchen was just a kitchen, but the sanctuary was beautiful. It had ornate, rich woodwork. The carpet was beautiful, the pews were beautiful, the stained glass was beautiful. And we were told, in pretty much these direct terms, that we couldn't use their kitchen anymore because they didn't want those people building. Okay? Fine, that's how you align yourself, that's great, I'm not going to argue with you. But I wonder where the love was in that message. Another part of that message is, I am superior to you, I will serve you, and you will accept what I give you. Turn that around a little bit. Some of those people were in a bad way. Would they be willing to accept a gift from somebody living underneath a tree? Last week, Tom got up here and talked about how he was going to go visit Bev Strong and make her day better. And he turned around being the one that was blessed. Our moderator does a lot of things for this church, and I have benefited from working with her. He told me that when Luke was born, Denise started... Um, just got together with some people and brought her food. Was able to receive benefit from that. May stepped up and is serving. She filled a vacancy on the governing body, but in turn is receiving rides home after dark. She is able to do that at the Way Street. Lori Bowers told me, she gets up here and sings. We are blessed with her voice. She also receives tremendous support from the Knots of Love group. She is able to receive from this church. A number of years ago, I had to swallow some pride and take some money that Jim gave me from the Deacons Fund to get the brakes fixed on my car. That was a pretty bitter pill to swallow, but what I needed at the time. A lot of us have served a community table. And I'll admit, it would be difficult for me to receive from some of those people. People that come and get a meal. Why is that? Why is there such a stigma attached to that? Even in the way I just referred to them, those people. Why did I have to say that? Why didn't I just say people? was kind of had a different message for that you know get over yourself love your neighbor just like the man in the video and the Samaritan and Jesus himself greater message is to love your neighbor and not adhere to customs and societal norms you're into short, short sermons today was your day because that's about all I have but I would just the first time I heard that message first many times I heard that message I took it as a nice guy doing something nice for another person and the same person that shared with me Samaritan was ripping out his guts to have compassion for that person was the one that said, hey, great message, but let's look at the other thing that was going on too, the cultural boundaries and the things that were really important, showing love to this man versus sticking to things that are engraved in your head of religious customs. Are those customs really what Jesus said or something that we have associated with showing compassion. 
I'm going to close this in prayer and just, um, yeah, and then, and then we'll close with a hymn. Father, again, I thank you for a wonderful day. And I do thank you for the opportunity to get up and stand in front of people and share a message. That is a wonderful privilege that I've been blessed with, and I do appreciate it. Please watch over us this week and help us to remember your message of love, not a message of what is and isn't socially acceptable. Watch over our comings and our goings and help us to see your plan and your design in this world.